This is a unique situation. This is Jay Bills for Media Spotlight UK and another remote interview I'm doing right now with Mr. Knight Rider himself from the Steel City. I've got with me Deke Green. What's going on, bro? Yeah, bro. Just another day in quarantine. Yeah, man. Are you, see, are you driving about right now? Yeah, I just have to go around the corner to smoke my little weed, innit? Because I don't want to go. <laughs> That's why you I'm saying, I finished now, so I'm pulling up. Is that why they call you D Green, yeah? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I love weed. Yeah, man. So, um, how are you finding lockdown so far? Like, you know, everyone's going through a madness right now and dealing with it. How are you coping with it so far? Uh, it's just a bit frustrating, like I said. So, um, getting into a routine where I don't want to be getting into, like you were saying yourself. Mm. Um, it's just boring. I feel yeah. it for my kids as well because they're just indoors when the sun's just out, you know what I'm saying? It should be yeah. in the park and thing. So you're hailing from Sheffield. Um, so firstly, like, because I've never been there before. So in terms of, like, the area of Sheffield, like, what are the known spots, like, hot spots? If I were to come to Sheffield, like, where would you advise me to go? Like, um, what for shopping or anything? Be like, you know, nightclubs or anything? Um, well, the city centre's kind of popping for the, uh, when it comes to nightclubs. If you can get in, though, because the bounces are a little bit of a pricks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, I tell you, not tonight, mate. That beard don't look right. You get me? Not tonight. Yeah. Oh, it's like, but, it's like, um, it sounds like that for some places in London, though. Yeah, it's, they're, they're just nabs, man. I don't really tend to go out much in Sheffield, but uh, the few times I have been, you know, Managed to sneak, get myself in. It's been a good night. Okay. Um, Metal Wall, if you wanted to go shopping, that's like a big, um, that's like a Trafford Centre. Mm. Okay. Just so put, they, uh, it's like just a mall? Put, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've just put a flannels in there now. Like, us man from Sheffield, we used to have to drive to Manchester to buy anything like Gucci or LV because they didn't sell none of that up here. Okay. And now they just put flannels in there. We've got all of that, so we don't really have to leave the city to go shopping anymore. Okay, so that'll be exclusive for me if I were to come up there. So if I wanted to get them flannels, still. Um, yeah, definitely. So you started back. Let's 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 take it to the music then. So you started back in two thousand and five. Yeah. So like it's been quite a journey. Uh, quite a journey. I wasn't for you. Deep, I wasn't deep green back then though. Okay, so were you a different name when you started out? Yeah, and it was way before 2005 still, like, probably 2000s when I was on some grime flex, known as Little Mac. Wow. So were you, so you were experimenting with uh, grime when it was at its early stages then? Yeah, yeah, there was a few of us, a little collective. Like, I, was, I was, like, the youngest of that, of that crew. Mm. But it was always, it was always uh, rapping from early, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, so you had so from two thousands then when it came to like to, was two thousand and five when you changed your name to Deep Green? No, it was like two thousand and twelve. Okay, so so the two thousands we you experimented with Brian when you're collective. Then two thousand and five was when you like fully like emerged going into this, and then twenty twelve was when you changed your name to Deep Green, which we're going to go to in a bit. Um, were you ever conscious uh, at the time when you started off because of, you know, being a regional accent, you coming from Sheffield, uh, were you ever conscious of how you'd be received uh, being a rapper that's, you know, by, back in the day known to be in London, like you would know the accent, like, but were you ever conscious of that when you first started? No, because realistically, I was just making it for my city, innit? Mm. Like, I didn't, I didn't really, see, I didn't really picture it going out of Sheffield I was always just thinking like how the people in Sheffield are gonna perceive it and uh, are they gonna mess with it and where to and then when I started getting people from London and Birmingham and other cities telling me oh we're logged into your thing you know I was kind of like what it's mad I mm. didn't expect it so. okay because um, do, do you feel now that you know because obviously you got like you know, Young Team Bugsy, you got Lady Leisha, you got JK, uh, Little Boys. Like, these are people that have, you know, come from regional areas and have made a stamp um, in the industry. Like, do you feel now at this current climate that, you know, their, you know, regional accents are just as much respected as people from London that are 
artists and musicians out there? Yeah, definitely because that's who you are, isn't it? Mm. And that's where you're coming from. So you, you can't be coming from up north and then sounding like a Londoner because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then it's not real for you. Saying. Yeah, it's not real. No. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I wouldn't even say I've got the, 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 the more strongest Sheffield accent. Like, there's other rappers out here from Sheffield that sound proper common, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think my thing's not even as as in your face as other Sheffield eyes. Mm. So I've been hearing that Snoop Dogg was one of your major inspirations when you got into this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it was like Dr. Dre and um, 50 Cent. 50 like, so Cent, Nate Dogg, Tupac. All, all the original classics, isn't it? Like, yeah. You know so that's what I came up on. So my dad was always pumping that. Yeah. Oh, is that what your um your your dad was popping off at the time in terms of that sort of music? Was that what you exposed yeah, yeah, to yeah, as a yeah. kid? Well, that was the stuff that caught my ear. Mm. We play all sorts of things, but that was that was definitely like the genre what caught my ear. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I always knew, like, found myself rapping along to the songs and. I could I could catch onto the floor real quick. I knew that like, rap would be something that I'm gonna be good at. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So was it always like US artists that you were inspired by? Has there been any like you know UK UK talent, UK rappers that you were feeling, or is it mainly just US? Um, yeah, there's all, there's been some UK like when when I was doing grind back in the day, it was always like Roll Deep was out at that time. I think. Mm. Like obviously, Skepta's always been about. Mm. So there was, there was certain like Dizzy Rascal and Wiley, and because I was into the grind thing, but I fell off it. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop's mm. always been my thing, but yeah, yeah. There's definitely some UK inspiration along the, along the way. Okay, so was it was it from the US standpoint where you kind of you know got inspired by getting your sound that you're putting out there? Yeah, because US was always like. It was more raw rap. Mm. I mean, like in 2006, I, I kind of switched from grime to hip hop. And the stuff what I was talking about in hip hop, the people around me were saying, Boy, that's a bit too raw for the street. That's a bit too raw. It's kind of like grassing on yourself. Mm. Right, right, right. I don't think the UK was ready for that when I was coming with that. You know what I'm mm. saying? But then, like, after getting out of jail about 2012 times, Mm. that's when I'm hearing gigs and certain people and they're talking about the same stuff that I was talking about previous, you know what I'm saying? Previous, yeah. Yeah, but everybody's, everybody's accepting it now. Everybody's like taking it in now. Mm. So that's when I thought, right, it's my time. So that's when I made Deep Green. So you, so you felt it was and like the right there. opportunity to kind of bring yourself in. Like, you know, when you, when you come out of jail and you, you know, you hear about these guys, you thought like, yeah, this is the right time now because you were you thinking in your head like now is more acceptable in this way that people yeah, yeah, more like the same people that was, out. Yeah, because the same brothers that was telling me my music was was too hot and mm. it's a bit like of a mad thing. They're nodding their head, singing along to gigs and all of that. So mm. um, you know what I'm saying? It's the hypocrite. So let me make my music now, ain't it? So 2005. Well, I mean, 2000s that you came into it, but then 2012, you had your track Hometown, uh, which you started to now go into studios and do live videos from then, like as your proper videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Hometown was my second proper video. Okay. What was your, yeah, what was your first one then? Uh, looking in the Sky. Okay, okay. So were you, did you feel that you were ready around that time to start like, okay, I've got to take myself more seriously now. I know I can do this. And I, I'm hearing that things are, you know, the music like Gigs is doing is more acceptable. Did you feel that you were ready to start getting things out visually and audio in, in a professional manner? Um, I don't know if I was ready, but I, I made myself ready, innit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely just jumped into it and just said, let's do this. Mm. I feel like if I would have waited a, a couple more years, a few more years, to where to the point where the scene's at now, because the scene's mm. proper strong, it's very strong. Very, very. So I feel like if I'd have just waited a bit to round about now, then it'd probably be a bit more of a bigger buzz. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. everybody's already 
used to hearing me and rare Yeah, because you've got um, you got a, quite a big catalog, um in terms of videos over the years. Um, yeah, it is a, it's a big catalog, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, was it, well, it's around about what I say fifteen. Well, plus fifteen years that you've been around and you've been consistent. Has there ever been a time where you felt that? In it because you knew you you knew that you prepared for you know what was coming anyway from the two you know up until 2012 like you were just like yeah let's go um did you ever think at one point that this was becoming long for you or were you just like nah my time's coming yeah definitely there's been loads of times when i've been like you know i feel to just not do this because for one i am kind of hotting up myself essentially for nothing mm. and two i'm seeing people putting like a minuscule amount of work what I've put in mm. and they're getting past me, you know what I'm saying? They might come with one song and then before you know it, the big celebrity is overnight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that can kind of knock you down, that can kind of knock you down uh, in a sense where you think, well, is my music not good enough or mm. whatever, but you just have to get past that. It's you like, it's like, it's like the microwave success versus the you know, longevity you know, of putting in so much music. So it's kind of like comparing the two. And then obviously, like, you know, every every journey is different. Mm, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, it's all about time, bro. Definitely. Um, so you did, a fire, you did a fire in the streets uh, and then in 2016, and you did a fire in the booth with Charlie Sloth. And I heard that you, you met Charlie through his plug tour? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So you were back. So you were backstage, and like, were you just like chatting with him, and um, you know, asking him to get you on? How did how did the conversation go? Yeah, that's it. Basically, I just bumped into him. He told me that he'd been listening to me for a bit, and he just said, "Be ready, in it. I'm gonna shout you mm. for the fire in the booth." So as soon as I heard that, I just went home and I started preparing. Yeah, I had to be ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like did, that's like did a big. Did, did you prepare your bars from then? Or was it already put yeah, yeah. in the bag? I prepared it from then soon as I said, ready to go. Because like I said, I never thought, I could never see myself doing them things. Mm. Like, not as a lack of confidence, but just as a Sheffield so far up north compared to where the scene is actually at. There's not, you know what I'm saying? So you, you, you feel like, you know, you're putting Sheffield on your shoulders to say like, look, I'm, I'm repping for Sheffield. Like this is, you know what I mean? I need to show these men that people for Sheffield is about that life. Yeah, definitely. Um, so with, with all those appearances, cause you did a, you did a toddler tea uh, appearance as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Was that, was that off the fire of the booth? No, that was before firing the booth. Todd the T's from Sheffield originally, isn't it? So, yeah, he's from the Steel City as well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm kinda of close with Todd already, so he was, he was dying to get me in there from early so. Okay. So all the all the you know, the freestyles, like the Link Up TV freestyles, the fire in the booth, uh, you worked with like Jay Spades and Pac Man. Um, you know, it must have like, you know, from there build up not only your following, but you know, did people you know, realize now what time it is. Like, reach? Did they reach out to you based on those events that you did? Yeah, the ones that come across me. Yeah, they know. They like. They definitely know what time it is, isn't it? Like, they'd be shocked that they, they've only just discovered me now or whatever. So you know, you've been touring as well. Uh, you toured with Scraps. You toured with M Hancho. You toured with Young Bane on their tours. Um, you know how how did how was it for you in terms of like performing uh, along those guys and um, did, did did that give you ideas of you doing a headline show whenever that time comes? Um, yeah, it definitely made me more hungrier for a headline show, which I was just about to get started up until mm. this virus came out and I didn't have mm. to get luck off. Yeah, it was a good experience to be alongside them them type of guys. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Definitely. What was it? Uh, what was what was the best things, or what were the takeaways that you took from those um, from those shows in particular? Like, was there any advice that, that was given on to you from those guys, or was it just like the experience overall? Just the experience overall, because I'm like I'm I'm more of a guy that'll sit and observe. So 
I see like how an artist connects with his DJ or see how an artist works the crowd. And obviously we learn from each other, innit? Mm. So it's one of them ones. Definitely learn something from them. Um, did you have you worked with these guys as well? Because obviously you've been on tours with them. Has it has there already been conversations with you working with them in the future? Um with scraps, yeah, definitely. Mm. Um not so much M Honcho, uh, not really with Young Ben. But uh, yeah, definitely with scraps and them man. Okay. Nice city guys. So have you have you chopped it up already? Has there been any studio sessions or just been talks at the moment? Uh, just talks, just talks. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody's been be busy with life, so yeah. When they're free, I'm busy. When, when I'm busy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so arrangements will be made eventually, anyway, especially when this lockdown's over. Um, yeah, so XXL, your latest single. Let's uh, let's get into that. Um, so firstly, what I got to appreciate is the fact that you are wearing Burberry, mm. and I don't see what. Well, in my eye line, anyway, I don't see many artists that are on the Burberry f uh, flex, unless I'm mistaken. It's more like the Gucci and the Louis. Um, you know, why? That's why I jumped on it, bro. Sorry? That's why I jumped on it. Okay. So, w was it something? Was Burberry always like a luxury brand of your choice? Or have you been on other brands, or was it just Burberry straight through? It's just been Burberry. I remember walking into a, we've got a shop up, up here called Eton. Mm. And I remember walking in there one day, and this was before I could even afford anything like that. And I just seen the Burberry rail, and I just said, yeah, one day, mm. I'm going to jump on that. Because everybody else is raving about LV, Gucci, and I'm a type of man that, that don't really like to follow the crowd. I like to like do my own thing, you get me? Mm. So, so is it only Burberry that you're sticking with then, or is there other brands that you're feeling? Um... It's just Burberry at the moment. I mean, I like I like I like the Fendi collection, but yeah, I'm a bit of an obsessive person. I can't. I won't just be able to buy one Fendi T-shirt. I'll have to start getting a whole collection. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I even seen as well that you you had some Air Forces done, custom made in uh, Burberry. Yeah, yeah, wicked. They're uh, wicked. Shout out Capo Customs. But I'm gonna ask, is it Capo Customs? Yeah, Capo Capo Customs. Yeah, because they look hard. Like when I when I checked the gram and I seen that, like it just looks sick, bro. Yeah, it look, it literally looks like she's cut out like a piece of um, uh, material and stuck it onto the thing, but it's hand painted, bro. Yeah. Oh, is it all hand painted? So it's not stitched. No, it's not stitched, man. It's hand painted. Oh, mad! I need. I, need I wouldn't. To... I wouldn't even let. I wouldn't even let them cut up some Burberry anyway. You know what I'm saying? So really? Hand -painted, hand -painted. Oh, so you just need the. You yeah. need. You just need the. Uh, the pattern you don't need the actual imprint to put on no 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 if the artist is good enough to make it look like it's um because you thought it was <laughs> add on you know what i'm saying yeah and obviously with xxl like it's you know full trap hop at its best um you know obviously you know a lot of your videos are kind of in line to like your real life sort of story kind of vibes um what what's your story with xxl uh, basically, like, obviously the scene's kind of uh, evolving a little bit with, uh, with the drill sound. Mm. I've been getting a few fans requesting me to do a, to do a drill track. Uh, my manager sent me a beat and just straight away I just got to it. Like, straight away. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah. yeah no. I had good feedback from it still. Yeah, no, because it's... It is it's a well-received video, like, you know, it's it's definitely one of the most received videos uh, so far, and a lot of backing has gone into it as well. Um, mm. So, with, are we talking an EP in the line then? Because, obviously, you know, you've got, a, you know, you've had a lot of, uh, you know, videos, you know, Link Up and GRM, um, you know, pushing out there. Are you looking to, you know, get more videos out there? Are we looking to get a project in the works? Like, what, what's happening for you? Uh, probably a bit of both. I've got um, I've got a mixtape, or I'm not sure whether to call it a mixtape or album. It's album worthy. Okay. But, but um, I've got a, I've got this project ready to drop soon. I've just got three or four more tracks to finish off, and I'm always trying to put videos out. I'm even thinking right now, what's the best way to to utilize this situation mm -hmm. and make a video. You know what I'm saying? 
yeah, I don't yeah. just want to. I don't, I don't just want want it to just dry up. I always want to keep the ball rolling. Yeah, because you you want the attention to be consistent all the time. Then. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, like, I, your Yay remix is 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 a, is a track I really like as well from you. Respect, bro. Yeah, man. Because um, what I found interesting is that it's a combination of both, like the remix from Oshi's My Yay and then Burner Boy's Yay. Like, do you know who produced the remix, or was it just something that you found and you just wanted to spit on it? Yeah, it was just something that I took off YouTube and just made my own. Oh, okay, so you, you don't know who who made it. It was just like you just found it and thought, let me just give it a shot at it. Yeah, I just, I just took that one, bro. Bootleg. Yeah, yeah. You 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 took the trapping level at its finest on that one, bro. Uh, listen, bro. <laughs> so like, I, I, I know, I know, like the like the hidden meanings of it, but it was, it was very creative the way you put it together, man. That's what I like to do with the remixes. I like to try and keep it as close to the original, but obviously with with my spin on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Like I've got a few uh, remixes out there still. So. Yeah. So is it, are you doing any remixes for the upcoming project, or is it literally just all original tracks? Uh, original tracks. Yeah. All original. Okay. Um, so besides like yourself and another artist, Coco, uh, also from the Steel City, um, are there other rappers or artists that you know that you know that we should uh, watch out for? Uh yeah, uh K dot. Okay. He's been around for a minute. He's been around for a minute still. More time more, more time is in the grime scene. But okay. he's a beast when it comes to the hip hop. Um Rakael up next, he's an up, up and coming younger. He's like on the wavy flex, like more of like a young band type of artist. Um okay. we've got uh skins, but of course skins have okay. got too. He's a he's another rapper just like me. Okay, so three different dynamics of artists, but they're they're, they're the ones to watch out for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. Time. Um. So what's so what's next then for you? I mean, obviously you you know you got your you know your mixtapes. So you said like later on dropping this year. Uh. Well, hopefully, um. You know, with the lockdown situation and keep things on tight. Right. Um. Is there anything else that you're looking towards or like? Because I was hearing that. You wanted to get on the festival circuit as well. Uh, yeah, there was talks about that. But we're just gonna we're just gonna wait and see what happens with that. Um, I was more focused on trying to get the mini tour up and running, but um, obviously with the virus. Yeah, yeah it's keeping it keeping everyone away. But Deep Green, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you, bro. Um, you know, obviously the technical difficulties, but we got there in the end, bro. Yeah, we got there, bro. <laughs> we got there in the end, man. So a lot of editing for me, but I uh, appreciate that. <laughs> nah, yeah, my it's respect, good. bro. It's all good, bro. Um, so if you can tell our audience where they can catch you on all the socials, tell them right here, my man. Uh, yeah, hit up my, um, my Instagram, deepgreen underscore up six. Same name for the Snapchat. Um, get out my Twitter, deepgreen89. Uh, that's it. Yeah, man. A lot of prospect for Deep Green. He's been in the game for a very, very long time. So watch out for him and you need to pay attention. Let's pay attention, yeah. Really do that. This is Jay Bills for Media Spotlight UK with Mr. Deep Green, Mr. Knight Rider himself, Mr. Steel City. And we out of here. Peace. Respect, my brother. Bless. Mm-hmm.